Hi, welcome to this week's edition of Blues Talk. We're again, Jim, Dave, and myself. We're going to look back over our victory against Zebra on Sunday. Look forward to our match against uh, B Ritz at the weekend and also the Heining Cup matches. Well, boys, a good workman like performance, I guess. Um, for a while workman has been probably a bit kind it was it was very up and down mm. it was um, the, the main thing was we got the, we got the five points you know because once uh, Glasgow had won with a bonus point we were a little bit under pressure you know we, you know we pretty much needed nine, nine points from the last two games you know going to Zebra you, you know you didn't know exactly how they react first 20 minutes absolutely superb mm. you know completely even with the team with a lot of changes you know it was just like clockwork but then, unfortunately, we kind of went to sleep again, and some very poor errors crept in. We got in soft tries, ended up level at half time. Had to go out and win the game again in the second half. This time we did it, and we didn't really let them back in. So, um, at the end, five tries, you'd be happy enough. You know, win games in Italy, we always seem mm-hmm. to have a little bit of a problem with. I don't know what it is, but um, in the end, you know, there was enough to get us through. And the main thing is we got the five points, and now we just need to win against the Ospreys. Uh, Blues Talk is the complete opposite to Leinster. Um, every week we're really consistent in talking about how Leinster don't perform for 80 minutes. And in a way, Leinster are consistent as well because every week they don't perform for 80 minutes. Mm. Um, it was the exact same uh, on Sunday. T- great 20 minutes to start off. Then Really very poor, wasn't it? The, sec- yeah. the sec- then second quarter. Off to sleep and then came out again the 40 minutes. They obviously got a rocket up them or whatever. Um, when we played, we played well. Um, Great to see Johnny back, um, playing really, really well as well. I mean, he hit the ground running. Issa has gotten back. Uh, there was a few questions over his form. Maybe his injury was affecting him. Could could have been that the injury was affecting him, but it seems to have cleared up now because I thought he was back to his best again. He was constantly inventive, looking for things, probing. Um, created havoc, really, a lot of the time. I thought John Cooney played well. Um, box kicking aside, um, which we probably talked to, his box kicking was quite poor. But I thought, I thought he, 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 got, he moved the back line around the pitch very well. I thought his pass was good as well. Yeah. Uh, I was, I'm, I'm a fan of Cooney, and I, I believe you know, that he has all the make, elements to make a really top-class scrum half. But I was a little disappointed. I, I felt, again, he started well. And when it was going well, he was playing well. But the minute it started not to go well... I thought some of his decision making, particularly with some of his box kicking, they were far was, too long. It was too long, but even just times they were unnecessary. At one stage, we had a mall that was trucking forward, mm. lovely, and he some for some reason long stone to himself. He grabbed the ball and kicked the ball along. It was just, yeah. it was just a might, poor choice. Might that but, be a, a, an experience? Well, thing. There, there is experience, but you know, you know, it's, I, I felt at times, you know, he just there was a couple of times he was even going the wrong side, things like that. You know, now admittedly he was getting the ball away quick, which you know is always a plus. And his passing was sharp, yeah. so you know. So overall, yeah, it was it was decent enough. I thought we were a little bit one dimensional for a lot of the first half. You know, we just constantly tried to run. It was very little variation, as, as I think you said, Dave. Half time, I'd say Schmidt just said read, read the right act to them. Well, I'd, I'd say the second half of the first half, the second quarter of the match, um, that that's certainly the case. There was a lot of load, shoot, aim. You know, we were we were going too too early in the phase count. We hadn't sucked in enough defenders and that gave them a chance to make turnovers and they made turnovers. And you know, one thing about that Zebra side is we said it a couple of times that they have been unfortunate. I mean, they are, there's the bones of a good side there. Oh, there is. Um, yeah. And the one thing that they do have is they have a guy who you could have, I mean, for, for 10 years during the, you know, the early, certainly the early part of the noughties, you could have an argument over who was the better bl- uh, open side flanker, Mauro Bergamasco or Richie McCaw. Now, Richie McCaw has gone on to another level. Mauro Bergamasco didn't quite, but he's still a very fine player. Now, he got himself into a little bit of trouble, but it was nothing major. But if you're going to get, give a player of that quality the opportunity to turn over the ball, he's going to turn it over. Yeah, but even more than that, though, I just felt, you know, we started over-elaborating on things. Yeah, so yeah. Often, like, we were in good space, yeah. and we started almost trying to be too clever, throwing passes that didn't really need to be thrown. Yeah. A guy could have just literally put his head down and, and probably was, maybe got over. Like, even Just to, like, just to, just to he, emphasize, there were, there were a couple of three times when um, certainly, certainly front row f- forwards uh, dropped balls mm. that were passed mm. to them in you know they were they were flashy passes but yeah. they weren't the right passes exactly and, and pa- whacking them into front rows isn't the greatest idea yeah and then even Dominic Ryan you know he was clear oh, through and then he stepped back into a tackle they, they don't call him Dippy for nothing <laughs> uh, he, uh, he did himself out of a try now the only thing I'll say is it didn't actually matter yeah. it would have been the last try but um, I hope he learns a lesson from mm. it you're a forward for God's sake Get, well, get the head down and get over the line. When you're that close to the line, 
just put your head down. The shortest down. distance um, between two points, isn't it, for a The thing about yeah. Ryan is, he's one of those guys who actually, you see him going into contact, he really powers into oh, contact. Absolutely. He's really good in contact. Yeah. If he'd run straight, that was, a, I, oh, I'm convinced that I, was, I, I was I was off me see. I, I thought he was over, and I just said, what are you stopping for? You know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, no, thankfully we don't have that on video, <laughs> Dominic. <laughs> But I uh, hope you learned a lesson. Yeah, and I was very impressed with Sexton coming back after. I mean, he was out for 14 weeks. He didn't, his last game for Leinster was um, in in January against Exeter away. Yeah. And I thought he ran the, the line very well. He was he looked very fresh. Looked very sharp. Looked yeah. very sharp, you know. Mm. I know he's, there was a few mistakes. There was a few things where... Um, it was a few of his tackles, funnily enough, which is so much such a strong shoot, he actually missed... But um, overall, though, like yeah, no, he he gave he gave lovely direction to things, and, and obviously Ma- Madigan's putting it up to him. He got seven from seven himself. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's well, that's 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 what you want. I mean, Sexton is a competitor. That's why he's as good as he is. You know, yeah. so he'd have seen Madigan, and he's gone right. I'm only here for a short while, but I want to make every moment on the pitch count. So mm. he's really put it up to Joe. Really has. Yeah, it'll yeah. be interesting to see the selection that the, yeah. that he comes out with at the weekend. I mean, I still pers- personally think we need to go with our best team, and I'd I'd always have Sexton in there as our as they're starting out off? Um, for me, um, in this circumstance, um, I think I'd go with Madigan. Uh, and I would go mad- with Madigan for pretty much all. I've said it here before, I'd, I'd go with all the Challenge Cup games because I think there's more to be gained from winning with Madigan uh, than there is from winning with Sexton. No, I, I, take you know? your, I do take your point. Yeah. But in, terms, I- in terms of... Or I mean, or I, I almost, I almost, personally, honest, which I almost think there's more to be gained from losing with Madigan than winning with Sexton, because uh, I think it's trust putting the trust in Madigan to say, listen, this, this, you, you know, you're at this level. We're gonna need him, you know, next season. Because next season, if you know, if we just go with Johnny for the last two Hamlin games, mm. you know, pretty much there's still gonna be a big question over Madigan, you know, when he's playing the Heineken Cup games. Where at least if he gets the, if if he can bring home an Hamlin, there's a good you know, chance that the coach won't be the same coach this season as next season. So. He'll want to win as many trophies as he can yeah, well, in his short period of time. I, I, but I also think Joe is the sort he, he'll want to leave Leinster in good shape as well. Oh, I know, absolutely and, and also, agree. I, it's not like he's he's disappeared think, off to New are, Zealand either. He's gonna be around for, yeah. for either either choice that's made. There's there's arguments in favour and mm-hmm. against both, and it's one of those. I don't want to sound like I'm sitting on the fence, but actually every argument in favour and against either player is actually a valid one. I mean, you could you could make the exact same points about Sexton starting the Amlin and Madigan starting the, the Pro 12 and the, the points would be equally valid. Um, it, it, it's a tough decision for Joe mm. to have, but it's a nice one to have. It is, it is. And also, I was very impressed with O'Driscoll for some of the little bits oh, that he did. Fantastic. And his, just his awareness to yeah. take that quick uh, tap and go and give the lovely, beautiful hands. He's really up. fired up at, the, yeah. at this. I mean, he really is. I mean, we saw him against Munster and we've seen it again. I mean, he's really fired up at the moment. Well, he hasn't had it. A consistent one yeah. rugby. I think he's been very frustrated this yeah. season in terms of obviously, you know, okay, he played the Ireland campaign and you know, but you know, even then, like he'd, he'd had a kind of a run for Leinster, then he got injured. You know, he had, he's, I think he's only played something like 12 games for yeah. Leinster this season up until recently. Like, so you know, he's he, he really just wants to play, I think, at this stage. And I thought some of his some of his offloads, some of his tackling, some you know what I mean, it was, was, was terrific. He, you know? he looks he looks in, in superb condition, he really, I mean. When he got injured against Cardiff 20 minutes into that game, the 20 minutes he'd been on the pitch it was were, magnificent. were an incredible 20 minutes of rugby. I haven't seen finer from a player this season, you know. Um, it, 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 with the poss- actually, with the possible exception of uh, O'Connell against Quinns, those were the two, for me, the two standout performances of the season this year. Um, unfortunately, O'Driscoll's was, was cut short. But he's come back and he's just, he's really spoiling for it. So he he, is. He, I, I, I don't think he'll want to be rested for any game for the rest no. of the season. I, no, I, I, don't, I, I, don't I think he's purely kind of going for it now and I think there's also there's probably also an element of you know certain people writing him off for the lines and things like that and he wants to kind of say well listen you know I'm mm. still here I can still do it you know what I mean so um, yeah no it's great sure we'll see we'll see some of it now um, see some of the play and, and certainly O'Driscoll was involved in a lot of it and this um, Denton's try and he's he's, uh, as we were uh, saying earlier show move um, that's actually good work by uh, Richard Strauss who actually had a very good game yeah he had a very good game Took a bit of a stamp on the yeah. arm, apparent or on, on the on the hand, but um, yeah, it eventually goes wide. Again, he's, he's involved yeah. again. You can just see that he obviously has got a, only four or five games left of his career. And yeah, he's, really, not, he's not gonna, he's not gonna, he's not gonna die wondering, you know. I don't know. But it, it, this is very nice actually. What impressed me here wasn't so much the break of the thing; it was the the skip pass. Skip pass, lovely. Um, it's great hands there by by Goodman. In fairness, um, like. You know, he, sh- he showed... He's functioning. He is to, what he to break, is. To break through, like, you know, and, and, and get the pass away. Now, admittedly, I thought he was cut out in the fence an awful lot of times, especially in that first half. He was... Uh, 
he's basically just slow in the fence and I think you know good teams can even not so good teams can actually well I think didn't, didn't the Italians actually, put Venditti on him yeah and that you know Venditti's yeah. quick and he's got quick feet there was a lot of gaps there yeah. like you know to be fair it was better in the second he's half, very but, powerful going forward but yeah. he's probably yeah. suspect in defence yeah, yeah. I, just, I just think he lacks pace yeah it's just know, a half a yard I mean it's, it, it's not like he's a poor tackler or anything it's yeah. just actually getting oh, there in the first place oh he can hit in fairness to him he can hit but but the easy, the easy there, pass yeah. would have been to pop off to Johnny Sexton yeah. there. And it would have been, you know, everybody said, oh, that's a good pass. But to, to, to hit the skip there to Denton. And in fairness to Denton. Denton. And fairness yeah. to Denton, who was had with. literally no rugby this year, really. And he's had a suspension. And, you know. I you thought know, he played quite well, well actually. Well, yeah. he certainly had his best game for yeah. Leinster, anyway. I mean, no, I know that's probably not saying a whole lot, but yeah. even still, like, you know, he, he did all right, you know, and he took his drive. We'll see him yeah. as well in this, actually. Um, when, when the ball goes to ground, it's him who turns the ball over. Um, I thought we were going to blitz them. I thought we were going to put up yeah. like 50 see, or 60 it's, it's points. It's in there. In the we should have. Yeah, no, Denton did very well there. Um, and at this stage, it was very, it was just all one way, one, one way yeah. traffic. Like, but I think we got a bit carried away. Nah, it's, just, it's just an old failing. It's just yeah. the, the intensity dropped off. And it's like, you, you know, you, you've no game one with two scores. Mm. Yeah. Well, Johnny did very well here in fairness. Well, like, actually, the, 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 one, the, one who, the person who did really well actually was Fergus McFadden. Yeah, oh, he took a lovely inside line. He provides... Line. The, the dummy option for Johnny and then cuts inside mm. you know he, he wasn't prepared to just die on the wing no 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 it was, it was, it was a grand try and at this stage like they barely looked interesting I mean again it's very soft fast defence in fairness like, it, you it, know, it does so. look like a drill doesn't it yeah I mean it was and, and, but it's, it's just it's, it's, after that though two things happened one we started falling off tackles and we started we blew we had two or three more really mm. good chances that were blown by poor passes I told you <coughs> It was a very, very, uh, there was no sympathy in the pass, you know what I mean? It was extremely hard. There's no need for a, a bullet pass when you're four metres from the well, guy. Well, there was one pass that was incredibly sympathetic from a certain Mr. Fionn Carr when he actually somehow managed, when he, the line out his oh, mercy, beautiful pass. Just somehow there. we saw a fella right in front of him and passed the trade to him, which I, I, an opposition player... Yeah. He looks as which, though his head is back in Galway, doesn't oh. it? You know, um, well, I suppose to make a change from a pin up his ass. Yeah, I mean, you know, not not a good. I, I I I've been very unimpressed with him this season. I thought last season he was, you know, he looked like he was working hard in his game and his focus had improved. But this season, he's he just had a brief kind of thing there. Was was it the Edinburgh game that he played and he played mm. with the team and and he actually played very well and people were going, oh maybe you know, but no, oh god, he was poor. And now, in fairness, he got this try, like you know, but I mean, Issa, <laughs> Issa yeah. could have literally set it up for a. Although he could have picked one from three, like. But um, in, in true, um, yeah, okay, we came out, obviously, we, we letting them back into the game for two tries. This was actually a bit fortunate. One, mm-hmm. I don't think he was onside. No, he wasn't, uh, no. He definitely two, played the bounce there, did the he? The bounce yeah. was, you couldn't, the bounce couldn't have gone better, like, you know. And, well, when a guy has a chance to stand and pick out a lovely kind <laughs> yeah, of, yeah, yeah. A, a textbook spin <laughs> slow, pass like that. Slow motion, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, so, that's, uh, that's one for the coaching videos. <laughs> it was it was a little bit unlucky on Zebra, to be fair to him. Like, and I, I like to say, I do think he was slightly offside too. And, oh, he, he was, and he that was, was maybe the one that broke the camel's back because it was just after half time. Yeah. And they'd got back to 17 and all and to get that bad piece of luck from, the, from yeah. their point of view. It was all right, you know, but... but um, yeah, it's just the way it kind of goes, and the, the, the legs seemed to go on them then, really. And, and we did get the uh, the bonus point try not too long after it as well. And a bit pretty, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> it's just funny watching. He, like, I mean, he's literally standing there. He has a chance to s- sort his feet. It's just a, who am I going to yeah. give this try to? Yeah. pretty much. So uh, he does the pass, and he actually stops and walks back to the Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, he just he just knew, like he just knew. And this came off the scrum. Interesting, the scrum was struggling earlier on, and. Um, uh, and it was struggling there too really I thought that was slightly forward it, it look looked slightly forward yeah but yeah. it's shocking defence oh it is yeah that's yeah. absolutely appalling it's, well, especially defense. after a you know the scrum collapsed you and know? it's not yeah. as if it's a move that Leinster just pulled out of the recesses of the playbook we've run this move two or three times this yeah. season mm. they should have been waiting for it um, I, well it's a classic move yeah. their, even, number even eight, that their number 8 should be shot I mean bringing in a you know a number 8 goal and popping to your you know, yeah but if you're doing if you're doing any kind of video analysis yeah. Uh, analysis but, but the thing but Dave, uh, just to go back you, to if you did that at under 14s oh. you'd be crucified oh you would yeah yeah, yeah. but just to go back to what you were saying about the scrum I thought Jamie Hagen made a huge improvement he did on the scrum general. no I was just looking at that one like, well that one went down, yeah, like, but, you know. but no he actually did and the scrum was actually struggling with Bent again and um, 
it's slightly worrying like that uh, Bent is the one who's here next season and Hagen's off yeah. you know so you know anyway. but it's also it's also I'm a bit in a way I'm a bit annoyed with Jamie now admittedly he's getting a run of games at this stage of the season but I'm a bit annoyed that he's actually playing so well once he's announced he's leaving yeah yeah but I suppose yeah. maybe you know the decision was made yeah and now he's getting the run of games as well so which is probably what he needed yeah Anyway, um, yeah, this this was actually the clincher. Oh, funny enough, yeah, we didn't score in the last 20 minutes, so we had all pretty much everything done. It was a decent enough actual bit of forward yeah. play. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing really exceptional about any of these tries mm. except for the, head up, the heads-up play from O'Driscoll here. I mean, yeah. that's the, I mean it's, it's, it's shockingly poor defending from, from Zebra not to be on it, you know? Yeah, uh, but I have to say great work from Issa, especially ah, yeah. as he took a, a, a straight arm. Yeah. Yeah, a straight arm. Filthy. There's a couple of nasty things. I mean, you saw that you were talking about Bergamasco as well, but this this was very dangerous, like you know. And, and as we'll see on the replay, as he's gone down, fair play to him for getting the ball down. Yeah. And, you yeah. know when he's you know he, he took a right. It's those dig. type. It's, it's those type of swinging arms can break your jaw, break well, your nose. Rugby league, that was and, and straight. I was just going to say that that was straight the out of Sydney is, suburbs. That yeah. was. The guy yeah. is ex rugby league. Um, uh, uh, did Helen Gahu. Helen Gahu. Um, and. Uh, of course, you know, good old blind Neil did absolutely nothing. <laughs> and his Homer touch jobs, Homer Zeno, Homer Etio, um, <laughs> you know, holy God. Lovely, lovely little offload there as well. But look at that, like, you know, he just absolutely unloaded on him there. You'll see it better here. But lovely, lovely by Drake. That's great. Yeah. And just, boom. And that's really, he knew exactly what he was doing there too. Yeah. It wasn't any accident. Oh, that was, that was, that was, that was pure rugby league. But there's nothing any sort The Brad Horn um, yeah. voice box I presume, I presume there hasn't been any. Well, the, the, the deadline for sighting was half four today, and I haven't heard anything. Yeah, so. I wouldn't have expected Ber- Bergamasco to be sighted now, in fairness. I think he should have. Um, I mean, that, one, that one probably sn- would, might have snuck in under the, ra- I, I under heard, the radar, but I that heard, was a more serious one. I, I, read, I read Bergamasco being defended under the voices of that it was actual an okay dump tackle, in the sense that he didn't, he didn't rise him above perpendicular and he did bring him down. Problem is though, for a tackle, for it to be a legitimate tackle, there has to be a ball. Horizontal. <laughs> or horizontal or whatever the hell. <laughs> but you know, there was no ball. He basically took a guy and oh, dumped no, him on the ground. It was, a, it, was a pen, it was certainly a penalty offence anyway, because it was chucking without the ball. But it's like it's that, that's completely I'm, taking I'm, a guy I'm, off the ball, dumping him on the ground. I mean he's not doing that. I'm not so yeah. sure it's a sighting offence though. Jesus, I don't know. I, I just think I think, think Odriscoll should have just given him a dig, and that was the end of it. Just give him. I mean, he did. But in I fairness, mean, if they cited the problem is if they cited Bergamasco for doing it, they would have probably had to cite O'Driscoll for giving him a few digs afterwards. So, mm. but least said, best mended. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. So anyway, like it puts us up and back into second position. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, we got we got what we needed out of that result, and we're back into second. So. Pretty much the ball is in our court. All we have to do is beat the Ospreys, who seem to be out of it now after their loss to Glasgow. They aren't, they aren't. Um, they're four behind Scarlet. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're certainly, you know, they're, they're really struggling. Um, and, you know, Glasgow absolutely taunt them. You know, they're, they're, they're relying on mathematics. Mm. Oh, very, very much so. But the one thing about <laughs> Ospreys is they, the one team they have no fear to play, yeah. and it doesn't matter where they play, is, is Lancer. And even though they're missing a whole lot of players, actually the whole back line... For the last two weeks, they've been, for the last two matches, they've been down four yeah. out of the, 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 the back five yeah. out of the three quarters. And they're of course, they have no game next weekend, so they'll yeah. come in fresh in two weeks' time. Well, that can be a help and a hindrance. Mm. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll come in they'll on top come of the ground, no, as it Admittedly, were. though, they're relying on Scarlet's losing. I think Scarlet's are home to Treviso something. Well, or? They're, lo- they're not only Scarlet's losing, but they're, they're relying on Scarlet's losing and not getting a bonus point. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, I don't think it's going to happen anyway. Um, and I, you know, hopefully we won't give them any encouragement, and we can finally beat them. And it'll take a little, we'll take, we'll take a little bit of satisfaction as well out of beating them. But it's still not an easy game. You know, they still have a majority of their pack are still there. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's just there's one thing about they'll still come whether whether they can qualify or not. They'll still want to come and beat us. You know, so um, every every team has a bogus. Well, it's their last game yeah. of the season, so presumably they're going to be fairly up for it and just absolutely. Or, so, they, could, or they could be on the last. Yeah, the but they could be. But there's probably some guys playing for contracts, so you know they've got some. Also, to prove. you know, there will be guys that uh, want to keep up their form, the Lions and things like that. To be a good few of them on mm. the Lions, you know, mm. certainly when they got, I'd say Gatlin's actually delighted. That they're not in the playoffs, yeah, or that yeah. they're likely to go out of the playoffs, you know. So uh, no, no. So that's 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 no easy game. But the good thing, at least now, is we don't need to be thinking about bonus points. You know, we just need the win. Yeah. Get the win. Yeah, that's all we need. And uh, 
you know, so we'll, it's potentially we'll five knockout game. matches now, really. Just win five or four four matches. I mean, um, well, potentially, actually, as you say, five. five this yeah. this is almost like a knockout game mm. in sense. Well, it's not knockout in that we won't be out, but it, it's not certainly that won't be to win. There's a prize. Yeah, there's a prize. In, there's a prize yeah. in, in, uh, uh, for it anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, look, like I was saying earlier, every team has their bogey team, and Ospreys have been our bogey team for a long way. They they seem to know how to play us, yeah. um, and they've even with, with full selections and indeed with not full selections, they've caused us problems. They always have. They're very very tricky side to play because they are actually Ospreys are a good side. They just can't yeah. get their shit together. That's well, they the can't get it together in Europe. I mean, they yeah. are champions the last two the last three years. You know what I mean? And that didn't just happen. Like you know, but for some reason they seem to get. They got together in the last month of the season. Yeah. yeah. And after Do you remember there was a few around. years ago, there was a delay with the bad weather, maybe mm. two seasons ago, and they went on a mini tour of Ireland. I think yeah. they played three Irish matches and they kind of decamped over here for a couple of weeks. Yeah, they played up in Connacht. Yeah, which yeah. They, they but they've, uh, they've done that. I mean, you, you, you were right about that. That was uh, the year they... was not Czechos last year. It was, yeah. Um, but then they came to did it bloody well, did it again last year as mm. well. Oh, this camper, no camp. I think, actually, I think there might be a problem with whatever conditioning they're using. Because they're peaking at the wrong time of the season. For if they're if they're hoping to compete in Europe, they're peaking at the wrong time of the season. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, other some of the other matches at the weekend, Connacht were fairly comprehensively beaten by Ulster in the end. Yeah, crack a match. Yeah, it was. Very yeah. Yeah, to watch, yeah. yeah, it was. It was real. Um, the ground was it was firm. Stuff. The um, you know the, it's it's so weird because you're used to watching Friday night games under lights and then you know mm. they're under the thing and um, both teams really had a go. Um, but ultimately, as we said. Ulster's need was greater and also Ulster actually played some cracking rugby they had far too many choice. big guns yeah. uh, far too much weaconry for, for, for a Connacht to and do when it. they were able to unleash their bench as well yeah, yeah. 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 I mean you, you look at the way uh, Tommy Bow played uh, Ruben Pienaar played really really well um, Andy Payne, Trimble Payne, Payne. Back, I mean all those guys those are, apart from anything else they're huge guys as well it, yeah. it, it always strikes me how, how often we forget how big Andrew Trimble actually is mm. yeah. he's a big big guy and on also the Probably the the moment of the skill of the match was actually from Henderson. I yeah, mean, yeah. The offload for both. He's going to be an absolute oh, superstar. Super player, yeah. and, and the thing about him is, though, I mean, he's playing really well in the second uh, in the back row at the moment. But I ultimately think he could be our John Eels type of a real footballing second row. Mm. And he probably needs a year or two to grow into that. Mm. Just you know, because he's still you know he's still he's still only what twenty twenty mm. odd. You know what I mean? But my God, like he could be, well, he could you be. Know, you never know. I mean, depend depending on what way he goes. I, I mean, I my, my personal belief is the same as yours. But he could end up at number eight as well. I mean, he has the ball skills for it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He has the pace for it. He has the ball skills. He has the work rate. You yeah, never know. Be a good line-out option. He could pretty much play anywhere in the back five. Yeah, no, I, I, he's, he's a very, very good player. He's yeah. a very good player, and he's, he's just. I mean, again, it's, it's only a year since we were watching him at the Junior World Cup. Yeah, you know what phenomenal. I mean? And, 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 quickly, some of those Ulster you know, players are coming through. And it's funny, like you see a lot of those guys, and they can look great at that level, but then they and, don't go to the next and level. And then they don't come up. Well, they certainly don't come up that quickly. But my God, he's come up so yeah. quickly, like you know what I mean, and, and just. But you know, sometimes guys get a chance, and you know, they he looks kind of a wiry character rather than a. Rick yeah, the, house, the question yeah. is between say if he ends up as locker or if he ends up at number eight. The question is how much meat he puts on those bones. I think. Well, you see, I, I, to me, he reminds me a little bit of Malcolm O'Kelly when he was younger. Like he's probably a bit, you know, in fairness, when when Mal was horse. He probably claimed Paddy Johns. He, he was um, <laughs> uh, no. I, I'd say in fairness to to Mal, Mal was oh, was really wiry. I mean, because mm. he was so tall, he was very wiry, and he wouldn't have the kind of weights programs, you mm. know. But Mal grew into himself, mm. you know, and by the end, Mal was a big lad, like and. And I can see Henderson maybe kind of going along that kind of route, like. But I, I, you know, at the end of the day, people say, "Oh, he's a great footballer. Stick him in the back row." But Jesus, you know, we have to go think beyond that and think. Well, listen, what what about having a great footballer in the second row? Because mm. we've got loads it of seems, back rows. It seems to be a traditional know? route, actually, in Irish rugby that you do that with young fellas. I mean, mm. actually, uh, a guy who's not going to be playing on Saturday, unfortunately. Um, Donald Cole Callahan, one of yeah. Ireland's longest serving uh, yeah, second rows. Six. He started off, or he started he started getting game time at Munster at six. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and speaking of Munster, like their their league form is just appalling. Like they were beaten by dragons. Yeah, well, they put out the race. Mm. They didn't care. Yeah. Um, to be fair to them, they, they actually did come came, back. They, though. they did yeah. come back yeah. because uh, the last I'd heard, the score was nineteen five. And um, but they actually came back and were leading with a minute to go. Yeah, and then last a, minute try, last minute yeah. try. Like so, um, ah, they didn't give a shit. And yeah. in fairness, we've done that in the past. 
So yeah. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be. Too I, 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 it's, a, it's an Irish tradition up there with you know Coddle and Guinness to send shit teams over to Dragons. Yeah. Well, it is, when, especially when you've nothing to play for. We really you do. Know what I mean? We like, really do know. short change the Dragons fans. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it, it's. Um, but you the know. thing is that Treviso are kind of creeping up on the rails now. I know they're yeah. seven yeah. points behind, so they probably won't catch them. Two games. You never yeah. know. Well, you see, if they have a game in hand, try against Connacht. If Munster lose on Sunday or on Saturday, their players will either be on a Lions tour or on a plane to the beat, or certainly in their minds they will anyway. So, you know, there's two games. And I don't know what Munster's last two games are. But, but even still, still, the last, last game. one. But even still, yeah, well, that doesn't actually yeah. matter. I mean, the only, the only, uh, but I think it's more just matter. for the league to give it a bit of credibility, perhaps, to see that Italian team creeping up the league. Well, oh, no, I mean, good luck to them if they do. But, I mean, there's no actual, other than a little bit of embarrassment, there's no actual, it's a different story of Connacht, or, you know, getting, you know. <laughs> it, it might matter if they decide to implement the changes they're talking about for the Heineken Cup yeah, this well, year instead of well, next. Yeah, well, they won't, obviously. <laughs> but, um, no, I mean, I, I don't think, in any case, you know, Monster will probably get it. You know what they play in Severy in the last game. You know the Irish get Edinburgh. It. If, if they need to, they probably get it together for that. You know, especially if they've nothing to play for if they lose this weekend. So um, yeah, the only the only thing is uh, forgetting whether Monster finish but for Zebra. If a, a weekend Monster team went over and Zebra got a win, it'd be great for Zebra. Mm. But that's the only. Yeah, well, that's their only last chance. Yeah, to get there's, a win no, there's nothing else in it. But you know, yeah, mm. and a bit of news anyway. This week we. We've probably finished up our signings of the season. We brought, well, we don't know that. I don't know, yeah, but it's kind of been hinted at that, that it's the last one. I'd say it's our last big, fo- our last foreign player anyway, because I, I don't really we see We still it. have a spare one, don't we? Don't we, we still have a gap, do, because it was announced, formally announced today that Heinke van der Merwe is joining Stade Francais. Yeah, oh, and I know we have a slot, but whether we didn't it be a, fit it last it be a high season, profile slot, mm. well, this is it, you mm. see. Like, so... Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah. We've yeah, so Zane is coming over from the Blue Bulls. Like, he's got a yeah. fairly impressive CV. He's got 70-odd caps for the Bulls. Yeah. He's got 28 caps for the Box. Yeah. Still a lot of... Uh, Tw- 20, 28 more than most South African fans wish he had. Mm. Um, most South African fans are racists. Uh, it's, yeah, well, how come they're not racist about Brian Havana and J.P. Well, they Peterson? Actually, they are quite racist about yeah, Brian Havana and J.P. Peterson. They want him in their team. <laughs> but they want him in their team. Now, I think, I think a lot more... Um, you know the reason why South African fans don't like saying Kirshner is because they just don't think he's very good. You know, and they think he he's got his place for political reasons. But first, in terms of you know Peter de Villiers' campaign, you know there was a certain amount of black players you know who were picked, and then lately because you know the Blue Bulls manager took over and installed them, and um, they can generally you know, find an excuse. Yeah, well, I mean, you can always make that thing like, but I mean, I'll be honest, I'm not going to. I mean, your, uh, no, I mean, uh, no, 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 sorry, Dave, 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 sorry, I mean, cut that bit if you want. But, you know, when, when, the, when his name was mentioned, when we first started talking about replacements for Issa, and his name was mentioned here, and we were going, oh, God, no, not him. You know? So now that we've actually signed him, we're supposed to turn around and go, oh, my God, he's great. Sorry, I don't think he is. You know? I just, I just don't rate him. You know? I don't rate him internationally. Never really rate him for the Bulls either. You know? He just... He, he seems to be, at best, solid. You know? Does, you know, the odd good thing. Doesn't, doesn't to make a whole lot of chances. Doesn't create a whole lot. But he seems to be at best. I mean, that's his defenders. I mean, the amount of bull, blue bulls fans that are happy to see the red, the back of him, you know, and and certainly South African fans are happy to see the back of him. I think it's kind of indicative, you know. Uh, Henry Kamara was probably one of the most criticised and most resistant to transformation in terms of the Super Rugby coaches in South Africa, and he picked Zane Kirshner. Um, the reasons for his being in the blue bulls had nothing to do with the colour of his skin. Uh, he was there because he was the best fullback available to them. When Henyek and Meyer went up to the Springboks, he picked him straight away as well. There's been a lot of talk about, is he any good? Is he not any good? We don't know. We haven't seen him play for Leinster yet. Um, but I mean, we've seen him play for other teams. So you can make an we've evaluation We've, we've seen him play for South Africa. He's the current Springbok fullback. Um, he seems to be fairly immovable in that position. He seems to play well for them. Yeah, and I tell you, I, just, I, heard, I heard an interview with Adriscal today and he was... Singing his praises now, I presume he's going to have to say that anyway. Of he is. But, but a, lot of the, a, lot of the, a lot of the criticism is based on stuff that actually, if you exa- if you if you dig into it, doesn't really exist. I mean, I've, I've heard of, that he's a very poor defender. Well, we've seen right. some very very poor. In his last tackles. in his last twelve caps for the Springboks, he's missed five tackles in total. Right, four of them actually came in one match against the All Blacks. So in eleven of his last twelve matches, he's missed one tackle. That doesn't look like a bad defender to me. Yeah, but I mean, you can always you can take a statistic like that. How many tackles do you actually make? Well, I don't know. I, don't, I just have the missed tackle stats. I don't have. Yeah, the, well, I, I didn't. Mean, I didn't memorize I mean, those. Yeah, well, don't I mean, forget. Don't forget actually, that the box play yeah. probably three of the best teams in the world. That's who they play, yeah, right? Yeah. Every season. Whereas he's going to be playing for us, presumably against the zebras, well, where dragons, is he? and 
What's that again? Why? What? Are we, what? Are we, we're playing the guy to play against Zebra. Well, we and well look at Issa. Issa plays most of, nearly he plays all of our matches. And but, but, but he also plays against the losers. Of course, he does. Of course he does. And and that's 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 what I'm saying. We should. To me, it doesn't make sense because he is predominantly a fullback. Now, when Rob Kearney's there, well, he played yeah. thirteen against O'Driscoll. Yeah, he, he he's also the played wing. Yeah, okay. he is actually he, he is actually he is actually by trade a fullback uh, yeah. or an out half. Um, he, played but, out, he played in schools. Yeah, but in South Africa, black players can't play out half because they don't have the mental capacity for it, according to South African rugby. So they're always shifted onto the wing or to full back like Brian Haban and JP Peterson, Brayton Paltz and Zane Kirshner, all of whom are out halves by trade. Carry on. Brian Haban was out half <laughs> by yeah, trade? Yeah, by trade, yeah. Went to Craven Week as an out half. I don't know, come on. You know, like this, this, this kind anyway, of thing that it's all to do with. Listen, I think I've we seen, actually I've seen enough of this, by the way. Play. I've seen this guy play and I've never been impressed by it, right? So, I mean, you know, you can, you can go and say it's all about South African racism, it's all about that, it's all this kind of thing. Now, when, I, when, when he was mentioned here a couple of, you know, a few weeks ago, and I said, geez, I, I'd sooner sign Zane Lowe than sign Zane Kirshner. I don't remember you <laughs> making him <laughs> a great objection. I don't remember you making a great objection. Because, the well, time. the basic thing you is. You know what I mean? I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like uh, signing rumours for a start. I, I, no. I'm just not interested in them. Um, and I don't like this whole thing when a guy, basically, the ink is still wet. And people are just running them down. Let if if he's crap after three games, ten games for Leinster, well, that's just a cop out. Then go into it's not a cop out. It's, it's a cop out because hang on. So, so you can only have an opinion about a signing if it's a positive opinion. So I mean, no, I so, t- so you ignore all the evidence that's in front of you. So how come? Say say if we sign Noel O'Connor tomorrow. We, it's, it, oh, Noel O'Connor is coming to Ulster. He's coming from Ulster. Okay, he's failed at Ulster. Failed at Connacht. Failed thing. He's coming to Leinster. Hooray! And I want. I mean, what do we say? Well, it's a bit of a second. difference between Niall O'Connell yeah. Yeah. and but a Springbok I'm, I'm with twenty-eight caps. I'm making a yeah. point. Do we ignore all the evidence of him playing rubbish? Do we ignore everything? Do we just ignore all our opinions and go, "Yay, maybe it'll work out at Leinster. Maybe we should wait and see how he plays for Leinster. Maybe he'll stop being rubbish and suddenly be develop into this there." But that's, I, that's, you know, that's, can we not? Can we not give an opinion? We're talking that's, about that's, that's reducto ad absurdum, Jim. But I we're, mean, we're, we're talking we're, about, we're talking about the, making signings. Yeah. You know? So, but we're talking about signing a guy from, you know, a different hemisphere who plays in different competitions with a different regulatory, regulatory environment and you're talking you're judging him on that and we're not going to see you're not going to make a decision based on how he plays for Leicester that's all I'm interested in I couldn't care less how he played for Springboks I couldn't care less how he played for Blue Bulls I, what Maybe I want you to do is play well for Leicester and but if he plays well for Leicester that's what we all want to do but you know we all have to listen we, sign, we talk about signings all the time we were talking about you know signing Mike McCarthy and we're saying yeah that's a good sign uh, we're talking about joining, um, you know, Jimmy Copper, who's, who's played in both things. And we're saying, yeah, that's a good sign. So are we only allowed to have an opinion about a signing if it's a positive No, opinion? I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is if, if the signing has to be ba- the opinion has to be based on something solid. And a lot of the opinions, I'm not saying yours, Jim, um, but a lot of opinions out there aren't based on anything solid. They're based on the opinions of South African rugby fans who, now you've been in South Africa, you know what their rugby fans are like. I've lived in South Africa, I know what their rugby fans are like. They're not to be trusted. The two things you can't trust South African rugby fans about. Any player who doesn't play for their province and any black player. You cannot trust South African rugby fans on that. And well, I, think, I don't think anyone would disagree on that. I'll, I'll trust me eyes. And I've never been impressed. Well, we won't know till next September. <laughs> so we should really wait and make up our opinion then. And well, how no, he we performs will. in but, a no, no, We're being asked to judge a signing. We're, t- we're here to talk about Leinster, right? So we're being asked to d- 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 judge a signing. And then all, all we can give is an honest opinion. You know, of course, we all want them to come and be as big a success as possible. And hopefully we'll win a Heineken Cup with them playing on the wing or whatever. And happy days. But all we can do is give us an honest opinion. I just, I think that I think this attitude is of we cannot say anything until he's played 10 million games for us. You know what I mean? Come on. If we're asking him to make an opinion. Hopefully it will work out. But I'm not impressed. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see how things turn out. Okay. Anyway. Hopefully. Anyway, Jim, another another one of your uh, hobby horses. The Amlin is on this weekend. Hooray! <laughs> Amlin Sevens. Uh, you know it's spring when the Amlin Sevens comes along. Well, put it this way. Be Ritz have got to win this game because they ain't going to qualify for mm-hmm. the Heineken otherwise. Oh, this is this there, is their I read I read in the paper on the weekend that they're one and a half million, two million in debt each season, and they get oh, half, sure. they, they get half get, a million they get half a million for qualification to the Heineken Cup. So this is something that'll help bail them out of their financial woes. Well, they they could they could clear their debt if they just put surge on a salad because um, <laughs> that would cut down their food bill. Um, now this is this is this is their season final for them. This is their grand finale. This is their yeah. uh, boucle final. This is the top fourteen final for them. They are eleventh yeah. in the league. Yeah, and they're miles away from six. They're like eighty no, no, points. No, no, they won't. So they're, 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 they're there's won't no chance of them qualifying um, this, for the barrage. As Dave says, this is their season. They actually sent a reserve team mm-hmm. out. I believe in the, in the last day, they are wholly focused on this game. They are going to be motivated. So the question is, 
how motivated their team they're going to be playing. Are Leinster going to be really going to turn up for this? Because, let's be honest, we saw the Wasps game. Mm. Now, you know, with the best will in the world, there, see, the intensity was not see, there. I think that the quarterfinal is that kind of opportunity to kind of, while we throw it around and have a look, then you're going to get in and you're going, do you know what? We're, we're going to have a home, a home semi, then we've got a home final. I think the whole, the whole um, it'll all shift how the, how the team perceives this particular game. This is going to be a very big, intense game, I believe. I think there's a lot of guys in the Lancer team who really thrive on the real comp- competitive spirit. Um, guys like O'Driscoll, guys like Darcy, guys like Johnny Sexton, right? This is a, semi, a European semi-final. It's not the one we wanted, but it's a European semi-final, and that'll get their kind of competitive juices going. Mm. When they see the guys they're lined up against as well, um, you know, because Biarritz, they're actually the most unsuccessful, successful team in Europe. Everybody keeps saying, how come Biarritz are so highly ranked? And then you actually look, kind of, you peel back the layers and you see, well, they've been in a rake of European finals over the last yeah. 10 years, you know? And semis. Uh, and and semis. Know, they've, they've got they're one of the most consistently yeah. successful, unsuccessful. They're a bit like the Claremont or Verne of Europe. Well, they're always there or thereabouts, but they never quite get there. Well, having an Italian team in your group every single yeah, well, season yeah, for the last nine help, years yeah. seems to help them a bit, to be fair. But no, no, they have, and, and they have surprised teams. And even in, as you say, in Amlands and things like mm-hmm. that, where you would have written them off last year, they played Toulon. Big and the, Toulon. and they are the current Amland champions. And, the, and they beat them because they, their need was greater. And mm-hmm. um, I definitely think, no, certainly they will bring an intensity to the game. I certainly think they will be going mm-hmm. out trying to basically dig out, excuse me, Dig out a win, you know, Yashvili doing the kicking, mm-hmm. good hits, tight defence, you know. They're not, funny enough, they're a odd team because they do actually have a bit of pace out wide. And they have again, a lot of pace we, out wide. Um, you know, Balshaw, they've got um, Ale, Ale Bruce Ale there, Bruce you know there what I mean? Well, like, yeah. they've actually got a decent back three. They don't always use it though, especially if mm. Yashvili has a real slowdown game where he just wants to get it a always seems going, to be you know? pissing rain in Beretz for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's just, they're just, they're just like I saw. Just, <laughs> well, that game against, against McConnell. Oh yeah. my God, that was a disgrace. But they've, they've, also got, they've also got a bit of, you know, oomph in the uh, pack. Oh, There's do. a fair bit of timber there. I mean, I mean obviously the great... Beerits player Aaron Nordicke, mm. but they, they, that uh, Lund guy, the fellow with the, the Bali lad, the Bali guys, Magnus Lund, and Eric Lund, and, 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 and they have a couple of decent. Um, yeah, obviously Barcella. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if he's fit at the moment. He always seems to be injured, but you know, listen, they're not. They're not actually a bad team. The one thing they are is a team that's so fucking past that it's unbelievable. I mean, they're not eleventh in the French champion no, for no. no reason. Like this is still the the, the the kind of generals of this team is the team. Are the team that was there for when Munster, you know, beat them in the you know two thousand and six, yeah. which is seven years mm. ago, which wouldn't sound like a long time. But it's a lifetime in rugby. Yes. You know what I mean? A lot of guys still on that team. Um, Absolutely, Trial. Trial's another player who, in fairness, he's always been one of my favourite players because he's managed to go through an entire career as an outside back or as an inside you know inside centre with absolutely no pace whatsoever <laughs> like he's he, the reason he's still playing is because he's as quick now as he was when he was 25 I, I, I actually think I think Try is actually one of those players who's I was going to say deceptively slow as a joke mm. but I actually think he's actually quicker than he looks yeah because he's just so he, he's a bit like um uh, what's his name played centre for to lose for Josian but Josian. I mean, even Josian had a bit more yeah. pace than but he, he, he's in that kind of he, he, always, he never seems to be sp- Hurrying, but he always mm. seems to be going quite quickly. Mm. Um, it's going to be very, very difficult. They're going to be well up for it. Um, and if we are as well, we'll but be. But see, them. I think we're going to go full throttle for this because you're going to have the likes of Isa is going to be coming towards the oh, end yeah, of his yeah, Leinster yeah. career. Possibly Joe. You've got Johnny Sexton going off to France. Possibly, hopefully not, but possibly O'Driscoll going as well. So there's a, you know, a core of that team that's probably in their last three, four, four games for Leinster. Well, the other thing about that is there's a lot of guys in that team who know what it's like to lose semi finals and they didn't like it one bit. Um, so they'll pass that knowledge on to the guys who don't and that team as itself knows what it's like to win semi-finals and knows, know what has to be done to do it mm-hmm. so you really have to go all balls out in the semi-final and, and I'd say maybe if the match was over in Beritz the boys might throw their hat a little bit out, but the fact that it's at home in front of yeah, 18 yeah. No, I, can't, I, I don't see them doing anything yeah, but anything. You, see, you just never really know until you see it mm. like, the lads, I'm sure the lads will go out going listen yeah we want to win this blah 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 but it's only really when it gets really, really tough. They might have to really grind this mm-hmm. one out because, you know, as you say, I, I don't think it's got to be nine tries in this game. You know what I mean? It's certainly just be a Ritz are going to try and grind it out. And, you know, maybe then lads might say, well, Jesus, you know, if Ulster and, Ulster and Glasgow don't have a final, you know what I mean? They're, they have no chance of being in a final. And if we're playing them, you know what I mean? Either side of that, you know, the three seasons in a row we've gone in and the back of a final yeah but this is what you play rugby for is to get to finals I, 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 yeah. I, I don't you don't, you know, you don't just you don't play for the for the 20 odd weeks of the season that you're playing in, I, in I, the, I think the once league. it gets to this stage I don't think I thought the quarter final was the slippy game um, I think once it got, once it got to the, once we got into the semi-final I don't think Leinster players will 
care whether it's the Heineken Cup, the Magners League or the Amland. Absolutely. It's a semi-final, they'll go for it. Yeah, yeah. we'll see what happens. Exactly, yeah. So anyway, there's obviously some other big Heineken Cup matches this weekend. Who knows that? The, Heine- the Heineken Cup's over. It Is ended. It? Yeah, well... Oh, one thing, I, actually, I see that, um, thankfully, the rest in Dave Carney um, for this match. Yeah, he's gone into the full... He's, yeah. been, he's been subjected to the full IRB recovery protocol. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, that's good, though, you know. Happen, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Clement play Munster. Well, what brought that to mind? <laughs> <laughs> Just speaking of Munster and our charming well, friends from the South. Midi Olympic, uh, the big rugby newspaper um, in France, ran a, a two-page spread on Irish shenanigans um, on what day is today? Tuesday, yesterday. And yesterday's paper. I haven't. I only got to see the the trailing piece on the uh, on their website. I didn't get to read the full article. But they were the, the gist of it is they're less than impressed. They they reckon the Irish are playing fast and loose with the disciplinary process in order to get O'Connell onto the pitch on Saturday no. yeah believe it or not yeah well, and, and they've also thrown in the usual gripes yeah yeah well I mean to be honest some of those gripes have been fairly weak uh, over yeah. the years you know oh, you, 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 you only ban French players for gouging because the thing's in Dublin and all this kind of no we ban them you know, for gouging because you're sticking your fingers in some guy's eye exactly <laughs> so um, yeah well I mean whatever the French no it's it's certainly um, it's the game of the weekend certainly in terms of um, you know uh, Talon and Saracens doesn't really inspire a whole lot of excitement, you know. Uh, it doesn't uh, inspire any excitement. Two, two English out halves having a kicking contest, let's be honest. Um, so, yeah, th- this is the big game. Come on, runaway favourites in terms, I think, 10 to 1 on, I think I've seen odds there. Like, which for a semi for, for a knockout game is, is pretty mm. thing. And Munster has started to get a few injuries. Or con- uh, 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 Donegal Callahan's out, mm. uh, Archer's out, no, he's a big loss, <laughs> and Howlett's out. But Rougerie, there's a. I, I think Archer's question. out for health and safety. Yeah. Um, and Rougerie's uh, question mark. I'll believe that they're all out when I don't see them either taking the pitch or stripped. Um, yeah. It's going to be, it's like Kerry coming into an R on the mm. final. They'll be fe- the, tomorrow, Munster will announce half the players are dead, and then you'll see them take the field. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, whatever, you know, I mean, Howlett, yeah, probably is because he's missing a few weeks and stuff like that. But um, when, when uh, O'Callaghan came off, Again, it was against us. Yeah, he, he, looked, was, he looked, looked distraught, actually. Yeah. Yeah. He was, yeah, yeah. No, he looked to be bad, all right. You know? At the same time, like he still is only on the bench. You know what I mean? They still have Ryan O'Connell mm-hmm. there. They've still got... I think there's, a, think there's a stuff. concern about Ryan as well. Uh, well, Ryan, to and be fair, O'Donnell. Has, has been carrying that show with Charlie Ridge for a long and time. But O'Donnell as well. Let's be honest, they'll, they'll get those guys up play. Yeah. You know, unless they're... Unless the, 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 they're the, the, the six or seven quarters on the jet to the The talk about Peter O'Mahony being injured, he'll play. O'Donnell will play. Ryan will play. I mean, I don't think, with the possible exception of Howlett, I don't think their first 15 will be affected at all. No. Mm. No. So, so, I mean, I wonder about that. But listen, does, even, even with their first 15, they're still up against it. Like, I mean, we, we, you, know, we, you don't have to tell us how good Claremont are. You know what I mean? Like, we've played them enough. We've beaten them last year. You know, with the skin of our teeth, let's be honest. And then, you know, this when year... The skin of Wesley for fan is bicep. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this year, obviously, they came back, you know... We probably played one of our... Probably, probably our best performances of the season away from home. Mm-hmm. Um, played really well against them. But just couldn't quite get the win or the draw. And then at home, maybe we were a little bit cocky. I certainly was. And thought, you know, yeah, same again. And they just murdered us. Mm-hmm. And, uh, they gave you know, Toulouse a spanking last week. They played, I mean, and this is, they and lost. They dropped, their, they dropped their entire first team, well, the rest of them, and the Drew was uh, Toulon. Toulon, 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 yeah. Toulon away. Then, uh, in front of 40 odd thousand in, in uh, Marseille. Uh, and and but if you actually look at their second team, it's ridiculously yeah, it good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, they've they got four this, all blacks in their second team. Another. Um, oh, Big Fijian guy who actually scored two tries, Nakawaki or something. Like <laughs> I'm really good at these names. You are, you are brilliant. <laughs> I was just hoping we were going to discuss the, the Glasgow game so you could have a go with the scrum half. Oh, yeah. Manu, <laughs> Manu, you are. Um, yeah, Man to but, Manu. Um, but, um, yeah, no, I mean, it's this issue. I mean, even say, even when you say there's a worry about, you know, Rougerie, well, their options are two All Blacks, Ben Stan- Benson Stanley, Regan King, you know what I mean? Like, they, there's no other. Even Toulon, I don't think, have that proven quality. Regan King, Regan King has caused havoc against Munster on, on a number of occasions, actually. Yeah. Um, but it would actually probably be Stanley. Like, and again, yeah. he's, he's an excellent player. So, um, no, listen, they're definitely up against it. The one question is out half, because yeah. James is probably out. No, James is probably in. Oh, really? Um, from what I was reading today, I'm, again, on Media Olympic, Google Translate's been working hard for me this week, mm-hmm. um, that, that James has passed whatever fitness test he had to pass today to be considered for selection. So they did try and register. Same time, though, I, I, I'll, again, as you say with the Munster thing, I'll see it. I, I believe, believe it when I see it. it. I believe they, it when I they see it. They tried to register Mike Delaney, um, and 
were told to go away. That was a ridiculous question to ask. Well, it was. Um, you, you, oh, of course you, it was. You yeah. have, I mean, the whole thing is that they were moaning about it. And this is the whole thing of, like about the, the moaning that you're talking about. The yeah. Paul O'Connell thing is they said, they wouldn't let Michael Delaney play, but they let Paul O'Connell play. <laughs> yeah. As if one thing of anything to do. I mean, you're trying to sneak a player in at the last minute yeah, the because only thing of a few is, injuries, I mean, you know? We don't, I mean, sometimes he's regarded as not being the greatest player the world has ever seen. But, you know, their backup out half is David Scrella. Yeah. Who's got, what, 50, 60 French well, caps? He, he's got injuries too. And that's why they have to actually play um, Rad, Rado Slavic oh, yeah. uh, against the, who's actually a scrum half um, at number 10 against Montpellier. No, eventually, if France didn't hurt him too much. No, he played quite well. Actually. But same time, you know, the, the bigger the games, the more you want kind of a special. The, the last, thing, there, the last you know? thing you want is some inexperienced 10 standing yeah. there with the Munster back row breathing down them because they have, they have caused psychological mm-hmm. program, problems for. Uh, inexperienced out halves that have yet to go away to this day yeah. I mean you're talking about Cl- Claremont are quite clearly the best team in Europe this year I mean there's no question of it I mean they've they've looked at it in France they've looked at it in Europe the question is this is this is for them now what the the, the top 14 final was a couple of years ago mm. this is do they go to the next level or are they always going to be the underdogs this is that game for them and that's the question well, they're not the underdogs they're certainly not or do the they underdogs. always have sorry the underachievers, the underachievers. sorry yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so are they always going to be the underachievers? And you see, the thing is, there are you can ask psychological questions about uh, Claremont de Verne because of that record they have in France. There are questions. Are those doubts in their back? Have they transferred that, you know, kind of flakiness into Europe? They have yet to. They have yet to win in Europe. Um, I think I actually, and they've lost a lot of very big games yeah. as well. They have, but the the one thing is though, all those experiences are money in the bank, just as it was for Munster, just as it was mm. for Leinster. And that is the big difference. Is when a lot of those sometimes games, that can be psychological baggage, Jim. When you go to the well, it, there's nothing there. Well, I, I, they I must think, have been the richest team in France. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but I, 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 I actually think you know, just as you know, I think there is absolute currency every time you play a knockout game. You get that experience. You get that intensity. You know what I mean? I think there is there is a lot of credit to be built up from it. it like I say, it took us a long time to do it and actually get that experience. And every single one, even those defeats, they stood to us like. And I just think it's Claremont's year, and mm. I, 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 whether it's Munster, whether it's Toulon, whether it's, I just think, I just think they're, and honestly, I think they deserve it. I think they're the best. As you say, they're the best team in it. They're playing the best rugby in it as well. I mean, they, they've got. 20, and they, they played. They were magnificent tries. in the quarterfinal. Oh, there was, there was the, the one question is, and it's always going to be the. It's a question that I, 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 I it's still lagging away. I, I, in fourteen out of the fifteen positions, I think Claremont have, if not a clear edge, at least at the very least parity with their Munster uh, counterpart but that 15th position is for me out half even if Brock James plays there are still questions out. They, it would have actually been better for them if they'd had Mike Delaney register, because Mike Delaney is a much steadier character than Brock James Seems to be, yeah. Brock James can collapse very quickly if things don't go his way if things do go his way he can look like one of the best players in the world. Mm. Ironically, he's always played well against Munster, though. You know, even true, in those true. games. Like, yeah. It's funny enough, they haven't played Munster since um, the uh, since you know obviously 2010, where you know um, they uh, collapsed. 2008. Oh no, no, they haven't played. No, sorry, since his collapse in the RDS. Oh yeah, sorry. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. But previous to that, when they played James, James, that was absolutely sensational against mm-hmm. them. You know what I mean? So. He's never had that thing, but and, and then there's also the question of the goal kicking too. Skrella or not Skrella, Para, Para seems to. See, I'd say especially if he's a dodgy hamstring, Para will be definitely doing the kicking anyway. And in fairness, we saw him kicking at, at the Aviva. You know he's excellent. So um, I, I think it's more a case of his general play. And I, 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 I just do him. I thought he played pretty well in the semi final last year against. One area us, where like, Munster um, will miss Peter Stringer is Para, hmm. because Para is psychologically suspect. I don't think there's any question about it. He can be got at. And, and there'd be no better man than Peter Stringer. I don't think Con- I don't think Connor George. Sorry, uh, Connor Murray is wily enough to actually. Uh, yeah, Connor, upset George, him. Connor George could irritate anyone. Uh, Connor George could irritate uh, people just by walking past. But no, I don't think Connor Murray would be able to get at Para the way that Peter Stringer would. Yeah. Um, but you see that these are these are all just ho- I mean hopeful things from Munster. I mean, there's nothing really solid in terms of where you can see. It, it, there's no real area where you can see. Well, Munster would, could do A, B, and C that would cause problems for Claremont. You can't actually see that because if Munster do A, B, and C, Claremont can actually do that as well. If Claremont want to play, if Munster want to play the kind of game you get, they played against Quinns, Claremont would be delighted because they, their front five just loves that kind of stuff. I if think they, I think Munster had their final three weeks ago in that in possibly. The but the, the one thing you will say, the one thing you'll always say is, you know, even though there's no logic to it, mm-hmm. you know, if a Munster fan, if the Munster team can get there, make some sort of a start. 
stultify them a bit. You know what I mean? Get them into a grindy sort of game. Pick their penalties. I just you think know, a, a load, a load you know? of things need to fall into oh, place. Oh, absolutely. Everything. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, it, has I mean, to be, it has to be a perfect storm. I mean, absolutely. Not only in everything going right for Munster, a lot of stuff has to go wrong. Like, even if you think back months. to our semi final last year with. Um, there was, they got a couple of injuries. I think Lee Byrne got injured fairly early yeah. on. Mm-hmm. Uh, they took off Nathan Hines. He got injured. So yeah. two fairly, you know, world-renowned yeah. players got injured and in vital positions mm. and allowed us to, to sort of stick with them. Oh, totally. And um, although at the same time, I did feel, you know, once we got our spell of rugby, you know, Just we, we, we scored half. a lovely try. Mm. We, we got that we did, we, we, did bring, we did bring a lot of trouble at the end of that match onto yeah. ourselves. Yeah, I, I felt um, even there was a couple of chances we could have, we could have gone away and actually scored again and, and made it a little bit easier on the heart. Like, But in any case, um, I, I think, yeah, as you say, there's an awful amount that has to go right. Um, you know, and, and the one thing about last year is all the talk from Claremont this season. I mean, they lost the semi-final to Toulon in, for the playoffs. And I haven't heard it mentioned once. But they haven't shut up about that Leinster <laughs> game. I mean, every time, every time they refer to it, every time you see them, they're so sick about that game. Mm-hmm. And they're obsessed with putting that right. And now what better way than playing another semi-final against another Irish team? You know what I mean? And I just think, I just think that it's, there's just they have too much firepower. Fafana, you saw he scored a try after 39 minutes yeah. there against Toulon. Sensational. Sivivatu's probably player of the season. I mean, at this stage, he's just been incredible for him. Bourne, Rougerie, you know, Nalaga. You've just so many options there. And then the pack is full. Of, and just tough characters There's, Those well. players are so good, Jim can pronounce their names. Exactly. I've actually <laughs> taken I've taken actual time. And, it, and then you go through the pack as well. There's so many tough... Whereas there was always a bit of a hollow... I mean, I mean hollow is not quite the word, but a bit of a soft centre to the, the Queen's pack. There's a, a lot of lads with not yeah. that much big match experience. I mean, you've guys like Bon Air, you've guys like Domingo, obviously Nathan Hines, Cudmore. You know, these guys are. And we were we were talking you know? about the psychological kind of thing, or I was anyway, um, about how uh, well could Munster get into the heads of the Claremont players. The reverse of that is true. We saw last week when we played Munster that Leo Cullen um, was able to get into Paul O'Connell's head and you know set him knock him right right off his stride in terms of you know his focus on the match. Nathan Hines is straight from the Leo Cullen school oh, of. Yeah. You know, so th- th- that's the thing as well. Can Hines get under Paul O'Connell's skin enough to annoy him? Because Hines is the wiliest, n- niggliest fecker. I'd say he's a nightmare to play against. I'd say he's an absolute disaster to play against. Yeah, uh, so he might be trying to do the same. Oh, of course he you will. Know? Of course he will. Yeah. yeah, well, it's going to be a fascinating weekend of rugby. Thanks again, boys, and thanks a million for watching. Cheers. Cheers.